Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hub World Podcast. Um, today. Today, we mute. Um, that breakdown is going to be about this morning's Pokemon Presents. Um, and we're just going to, you know, go through and talk about it. Um, so before we talk about that, um, my name is Jules from World, and today I'm joined Mateo? by... And Gino. Great. And so, like, we had been talking about the last couple weeks, actually, um, doing a Pokemon... Um, a Pokemon podcast around the recently um, released MOBA game, Pokemon Unite. Um, and it kind of ended up playing in our favor when they announced a Pokemon Presents because, um, as you'll see when we kind of progress the video, they kind of open with Pokemon Unite. So we're going to kind of merge that. Like, we're not just going to talk about what they did here um, with Pokemon Unite. We are also going to talk about that. Um, but we're also going to have a larger conversation about Pokemon Unite. Um, and then we are going to move forward and talk about the um, other things in the Pokemon Presents um, and then kind of just leave you with our thoughts and our breakdown. So um, just to kick it off, um, I'm going to start moving along this video. Um, so we're going to go through. I'm just going to mute that for you guys. Um, and our first announcement here was, like we said, it was Pokemon Unite. And um, we get shown a little bit about the game. They talk a bit about um, what's making the game um, like was great about it, and then they talk about the iOS release. Um, sorry, the mobile release. I forgot some people use Android. Yeah, um, most, people, <laughs> most people which are right use Android. Sure. Um, <laughs> and like we knew most of this information, so it's dropping September twenty second. You're going to be able to play with Switch and with iOS. Um, this is cool though. Like your pre registration campaign, and I Android. Yeah. So. If, 2,500,000 people pre-register. Everybody who pre-registers is going to get um, a Unite license for Pikachu, which I think is really really awesome. And I, as one of the people who didn't actually purchase Pikachu or pick, pick Pikachu as my um, starter, this is this is really exciting for me because I actually really enjoyed Pikachu in the tutorial. Um, and then if 5 million people pre-register, we get this um, costume, which I care less about, but... Um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Um, yeah, do you get seven? I didn't pick Pikachu either. <laughs> I enjoyed Pikachu yeah. too. I, so I was it's nice that Gordon they're too. giving. It's nice that they're giving us more characters, so I don't have to pay in-game currency for them. But uh, Pikachu is a really good one. I'm actually really happy with that. So. Yeah, it also does say down there, if you've already gotten the Unite license for Pikachu, you'll receive Aos coins instead, which that's kind of nice. Um, I doubt they're going to give you enough to buy a full new character, but um, I mean, at least you're getting something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, that's a nice little bonus, and I'm excited for the mobile one to drop because, you know, um, it'll be fun to play on the go. Um, and so for those of you who don't know, yesterday, actually, um, or actually today, technically, um, on the next new character. So Gardevoir was the first post-release character, and Blissey, the second post-release character, was released today. Um, I haven't had a chance to play against or as Blissey yet, but um, it's still pretty exciting. And then here we kind of get a glimpse at some of the future characters. So we already know Blastoise is coming at some point, um, and then they kind of reveal a couple more. So the first one they reveal here is Mamoswine. Um, yeah, what do you guys... Yes was the only thing I could think of when I saw Mamo, and I'm like, yes, another physical attacker, possibly a tank, and Mamoswine is probably one of my favorite Pokemon, besides Flygon, so, like, I'm I'm really, really happy at this. Just, like, it's just a big, cuddly ball of Mammoth, and it's great. Yeah, and, like, I, like, I said this earlier to Mateo, and I'll say it again, um, Definitely not the Gen 2 turn Gen 4 ice type Pokemon that I would have wanted. Um, but that being said, I do like Mamoswine. And it's nice to see Pokemon who aren't super popular get some love. Excuse um, me. Like he's well liked, but he's not like you know what I mean? He's not like mainstream. He's not like the Lucario or the um Gengar. the starter type Pokemon or the Gengar, the Alakazam, right? Like he's definitely not hyper popular and it's nice to see that Pokemon Unite isn't 
choosing its Pokemon primarily based off of popularity. Like clearly they are for some, like Absol and Gengar and Machamp are there. But then you also got like ones that are just functionally make sense, like Blissey or here's Mamoswine. You have Eldegoss, right? Like they're not necessarily the most popular Pokemon, but you can build a character around them and they can be unique. And I like that they're doing that. I like that not every Pokemon is just going to be what you expect. Um, and there's a good balance of it, right? Um, because we have, like, of the five post-release characters we've seen, technically six, if you count Zeraora, but five post-release characters. Um, Blastoise, Gardevoir, Sylveon, which I'm spoiling, but whatever, people are going to see it anyway. Mamoswine and Blissey. Only, like, arguably, arguably three of those, well, no, no, yeah, not even arguably. Like, three of those are popular Pokemon, but two of them aren't. Um, like Blissey and Mamoswine aren't the most popular. We'll have so you know that Blissey is very popular. Yes, Giancarlo would like us <laughs> to let you know that Blissey is just as popular, if not more popular, than Blastoise. Which that is the, all I will say, and I will leave you <laughs> in the comments to rebuttal. Um, sorry, I'm trying to start a war. Um, yeah. But yeah, Mamoswine <laughs> really, really looks cool, and I think yeah, like you said, he could be a tank attacker. He looks cool, and then the other one, which was already leaked prior. Um, is Sylveon, um, who we know is super popular and, you know, is the first fairy Pokemon. And I'm sure a lot of people are excited about this one. Now, is Sylveon going to start as an Eevee? I would think so. So, see, that's a conversation I actually wanted to bring up about um, the Pokemon that they're going to pick, because this is actually one that I've been thinking about a lot, is for Pokemon that have multiple evolution or inary routes, it would make sense to have, like, for example, if Sylveon starts as Eevee, then why couldn't they, later down the road, also have other evolutions? So it's almost like half of the character is the same because they still start as Eevee, but they become something else. Mm -hmm. Right? And, like, they could do that with Slowbro, for example. They can do Galarian Slowbro, or they can do Slowking, um, and have a different kind of character that plays differently, but is based off the same starting character. I mean, yeah, I think they would, for Slowpoke, Slowpoke, I don't. Be different. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, because like Galarian Slowpoke is different than regular Slowpoke. Yeah, so I don't know if that would be. But, but Galarian Slowpoke isn't different enough from Slowpoke that functionally they would be different. Like aesthetically, they'd be different, but I'm sure they would. They could function as the same character. Mm-hmm. It's the evolution that would change, right? I'm trying also to think of another because... example. Like, for example, if they ever do Polyrath, then they could do Polytoad yeah, yeah. as well. Or mm-hmm. Vileplume and Blossom or um, Gorbis and Huntail. Oh, no, God. They would never oh. do those. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Osmom. What about. No. <laughs> Not a fan oh. of evolving legendaries. Yeah. Anyway, I, I want to bring some attention to this specific screenshot where we have it paused right now. Look how tiny Mamo is. <laughs> the oh, well, I, 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 no, I like, think the, just... the image is the image is just is weird because if you look at like the Pokeball above Mamoswine's head, and then the one is like Sylveon is definitely zoomed in because the Pokeball behind yeah. Sylveon is different, right? And the grass is bigger too. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but they look almost the same size. It's just like, oh gosh, no. I know there's some size distortion, but God. Yeah. Um, Whoa. Uh, so I so what I want to ask, just kind of like on our Pokemon Unite kind of topic. Um well firstly, before we get into the obvious one, um let's just start with like what are your guys' impressions of this game so far? Like it's almost been a month since it's dropped. I know all of us have played um various degrees but we've all played enough to like comment on it what are you what are your impressions like what do you think of it it has no business being as good as it is <laughs> albeit for like a very simplified dota uh moba game or league league light game it has no business being this good and like i understand the roster is still really really small right now so there's not a lot of like intricacies and you need to master like what 30 characters or anything like that like in other MOBA games to, and like there's a proper ban list and multiple lanes and like it's it's inherently a simpler game but that doesn't make it bad 
Yeah, I see. That's what I feel too. Is like because yeah. we we had our little League of Legends phase, um, and yeah. I liked League of Leg- Legends, but my biggest gripe with it was always it was one the skill ceiling and the entry level was so ridiculously high that it was hard to just get into it, especially with how many um, champions there were. Because you know, like when there's that many champions and and there's certain ones that are like the most viable, it's very, very difficult to get into it. Um, especially because in League of Legends, at least, um, I found you like sure they give you a lot of champions, um, but they don't there's not really earnable currency to get the champions that's like reliable in the same way as Pokemon Unite, right? Like Pokemon Unite, I know if I play consistently consistently for two weeks, I can probably buy any character I want at the end of that two weeks. There isn't really a system like that in League. So it was really either I fork out the money to get the character I want to play, or I hope that I get random roles that allow me to get the character I want. But then the other thing is like, the time like and i know that some people don't like that the, the game only lasts 10 minutes um but i love that about pokemon unite i like the fact that even if i lose i'm not upset because i didn't i only wasted 10 minutes of my time and then i could play another one um yeah. whereas with league of legends i remember like sometimes my games would go an hour and when you lose at the end of that it feels like such a loss of time and then if you want to play three games sometimes you're looking you're like damn, we started playing at 6 p.m. and now it's 10 p.m. And where did all my time go? Whereas with Pokemon Unite, I feel like I can play this game for an hour and have played like five or six games. And I like that. And it lends itself well to mobile because I know when the mobile one drops, like I'm always like, what do I do when I'm out? And I just go on TikTok. But like now if I have 10 minutes, I'm going to pull up Pokemon Unite and play a game. Like, why not? Yeah. I wonder how much data like each match will take actually i don't know but then again like you can now get like go out and get like mobile data plans that have like what 20 gigs at a time and you can probably play like a decent chunk of games and especially like if if they what if they bring in like controller support and everything for this too right so okay you have like you're on the go right and you have one of those like xbox controller game vice things that you can hook your phone up to yeah it'll look weird but you at least don't muck up your screen and block it with your hands yeah. if you're using a smaller smart device, right? I'm not, not all expect- of us have Galaxy Notes. <laughs> I'm not expecting this game to run well on phones, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I just this I don't think I think the mobile experience is gonna be really dumbed down. It'll it'll probably have frame rate issues and drop out like players will drop out and it, it, I don't know. I don't have a lot of faith in it just for whatever reason, but and it's going to affect the overall too because you're going to have more people on mobile. Yeah. That's the so, thing. But oh gosh, um, more eight-year-olds. Just what what I, quickly my thoughts of Pokemon Unite. Um I had absolutely no intention on playing this game at all. I've never played a MOBA in my life. Never played League of Legends or Dota or any of those games. Um and like I almost would say I was turned off by those games. Like, I had absolutely no interest in playing them. When I saw Pokemon Unite and I saw Tencent was involved, I then really didn't want to be uh, in, get into this game. But then, eventually, I just caved, downloaded it, played it. Because I'm like, if I ever did want to play this game, at least I want Zerora. And if I miss out on that, then I'd be upset. So I played the one game, and I really liked it, and now I kind of hate myself for it, because I think the game's really good. So now, I kind of went into this game completely blind. I had no idea how any of these systems work, any of the paths, which characters... Like, I didn't, was, I didn't even play the beta, so I have absolutely no idea, like, the uh, the strategies or anything to play these games. So, like, I literally had... The first few games I played, I had no idea what I was doing, but I was I was seemingly doing all right. So... But now that I've played a decent amount of the game, I think I'm level 15 now. I have multiple characters that I I main, and I think I'm gonna just keep playing this game. There's no like I there's no end in sight for me. Like I I'm actually really enjoying it. So, mm-hmm. uh, 
But and I think the reason why I'm enjoying it is exactly what you said, Jules, is because number one, the games are short. And then number two, the thing that is the the main reason is because it's Pokemon. If it was anything else, I would have probably absolutely no interest in it. Maybe superheroes. If it was like DC or Marvel heroes, maybe. But like I find the character designs in League of Legends generic. You can whatever. I just don't care. Like it reminds me of like these those uh, ads you get on for like generic mobile games on YouTube. Like I, I just don't care about the designs. I just they don't do anything for me. But because I care and I'm invested in Pokemon, that is the biggest driving factor for me to actually. Yeah, it's like have enjoyment it's almost, in the game. It's almost like Smash Bros versus like a regular fighting game, right? Like it's just like knowing the characters allows you to get in. Like sure, like I'm not saying the characters in League are bad or like the characters in a fighting game are bad, but. I think for some people the appeal is like knowing the characters already like yeah. something like and that's the thing is like that character wrecking like recognition isn't the only thing because or else I would be playing Pokemon Masters EX which I don't like um, mm. and it's not just the character it's like the mixture of like it's short it's simple it's sweet I can play with friends I enjoy the gameplay I feel like I'm learning I feel like I'm getting better and I love the characters and I can get excited when they add a new character because I already know the characters whereas with League it's like I don't really get excited when they add a new character because I really only play one character in League of Legends and I kind of want to stick to that because I know how to play them and nothing else really appeals to me whereas with Pokemon like even though right now like ranged is kind of my role if they drop zoroark and he's a speedster i'm gonna learn how to play him because i love zoroark and i really want to play a character like that like um and i think it's just like there's a good variety of pokemon like i said like i think it's nice knowing that it's not just the popular pokemon because that really makes me feel like hey like one of my favorites could actually get in despite not being the most popular pokemon even though yeah. most of my favorite Pokemon actually are the popular Pokemon. Do you guys want to speculate like what you would like to see added to this game? Just like briefly I do. before we move on? Yeah, no, no, I do. So that's the next thing I was going to say is like, before we get to characters, which we can kind of end with, um, is there anything you want to see changed about the game, like added or um, altered about like the way that the game is currently run? Uh, absolutely. Um and I feel like it's just going to happen eventually. I don't think this is like a a off the wall type of dream thing, but I just don't like how Zapdos really like if whoever basically gets Zapdos at the end of the game almost has a guaranteed win. I feel like like we can all give up if the opposing team gets Zapdos for that last minute or whatever how long it is because like we if you die in that in that part of the game your respawn time is insanely high and then they just come in and quickly bank a boatload of orbs or whatever the the thing is uh and there's the game right there you could be playing so well up to that point lose zapdos on like a fluky play and then that's it that's the game that's the only time i really have a sour taste in my mouth after a game so, so what's your solution to, to that? Like, what do you want to happen? Well, we, we talked about this before. Like, um, I think they should just have other types of legendaries that appear aside. Like, Zapdos can be one of many legendary Pokemon, or it doesn't even have to be a legendary Pokemon. One of many Pokemon that appear in the middle of the stage that you take out, and it adds a different... Uh, yeah, so it's like cycles, so you don't know them. who's going to pop yeah. up. Like I, yeah. that's an element exactly. of randomness. That yeah, adds an element like, of randomness. It should well, be like if there's going to be a rotating thing, or it be like a rotating week, or if it's a stage. Like for instance, if we get like, like because we're currently on like the main the main arena and whatever main arena can be Zapdos, but if they just add just say like a like a secondary arena that has just say like a fall or an autumn aesthetic, you could have just say Galarian Articuno show up. Let's just say. Sure. See, my thing is like, as much as I would be more of a defensive one, and I feel, yeah, Yeah. and like, so I feel like some people would want it to be like that, where like they want to know clearly who's going to show up. 
But like when I think about like when we used to play League of Legends, for example, sure, like Baron and whatever the other thing was, um, the, the dragon. That, no, not the dragon. The other one that like rams into the towers. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Um, Harold or something. You're the Harold. Um, Baron and Harold, they show up every game at a certain time, sure, and like that's like a, an objective. But I feel like Zapdos should be treated more like the dragons. So the way that the dragons work in League of Legends, Mateo, is at certain time frames throughout the map, a match, I can't remember what the actual timestamps are, a dragon spawns in the jungle. But which dragon spawns is random, and the buff it gives is like set. So like the fire dragon does one thing, and the ice dragon does one thing, and the earth dragon does one thing. So I feel like Zapdos needs to be treated like that. Like I feel like even if it was just the three legendary birds, it's you don't know which one is going to pop up at the end of the game. One of three, and it could even be something like Zapdos is the offensive one. Zapdos when you when you kill Zapdos, it does what it does right now. It makes all the enemy teams remaining towers vulnerable to instant capping. Maybe Articuno can be defensive. When you kill Articuno, it freezes your towers for however long, and they can't be capped for a certain amount of time. And then maybe Moltres is like, I don't know, it burns the super off of all of the enemy teammates. Like it just resets their supers, like something like that, like th- where they all do different things, and so it helps you in different ways. Still but think that, yeah, it, I still think that like Zapdos is still the clear winner in in that sure, situation. Sure, but or it, it is. is. But the thing is, if you don't, too, right? sure, but but that's what I mean. Is of course it's going to help you, but the fact that you don't know which one is going to come will change the way that you approach it. Yeah. Um, but the also, thing is, though, in league, in league though, jewels, all four of the dragons eventually spawned. Yes, and that's what I was going to say. All of them. But that's what I was going to say is because they're only ten minute games, only one spawns. But like once they have enough of those things, they can even experiment with having a longer game mode where it's a thirty minute game mode. At eight minutes, one of them shows up. At eighteen minutes, another one shows up. And at twenty eight minutes, another one shows up. And the order in which they appear can heavily alter the game. And there's like more towers, or like the towers take more hits, or whatever. Or they it add is, a right? third lane, or they add a third lane. Um, but yeah, I think um, I think definitely that's I I personally am of the opinion that I don't think they need to nerf Zapdos because I really think that Zapdos shouldn't be the only end game objective. I yeah. really do think that there there should be a cycling, a random cycling of end game objectives that they keep adding and maybe it'll start with the legendary birds maybe it'll go into the galarian birds maybe they'll add the legendary dogs or lugia or ho or whoever they're gonna add but i think there should be cycling objectives and that is ultimately how league worked too right like baron didn't exist in in league till later it was something that was added and now it's like one of the main objectives you do at the end, like when you get that late in the game, is like you go for Baron. And so I think Pokemon Unite is absolutely going to develop like that. Like I think right now the game is defined by Zapdos, but I think in three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, like the game's meta is going to change. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, well... If that's it, then why don't we talk about just characters? Um, who do you think they're going to add? Who do you want them to add? Um, I feel like this is the same question. I think, like, I'm, I, I want to go first just because I think I, I have a bit of a funny one. Um, so who do I, who do I want them to add? Obviously, my favorite Pokemon, but I think they're going to be a lot more. Like, I would like them to see to try to do this from a little bit more of a technical standpoint. I think Ditto would be a really funny choice. And it basically okay. what the Ditto would do is it would it would transform into the other Pokemon and you would get like the other Pokemon's move for like a pre- uh, for a set period of time. So can I rebuttal to you? Yes. So the one I want is Zoroark and I want him for that exact same reason which is that his alt would be he turns into one of the enemy team teammates and takes their alt. Yeah, because he well, also Zoroark, turns into Zoro, other teams. Uh, Zoroark 
does stuff based on your team, not your yes, opponent's but he, teams. But he is an illusionary Pokemon. Like his concept is he turns into other Pokemon. So I feel like that's why I would want Zoroark over Ditto. Is because I feel like he would have more of a baseline of like what to do other than the transformation mechanic while also incorporating it. But I do want that. Like I do want a character who is a mimic character. And my choice is Zoroark. But like I'm not saying your choice is bad. I'm saying like I think we both want the same thing. Yeah. A mimic character. I don't know. Um, I think Ditto would be funnier because, like, at the beginning, if Ditto's your jungler, just say you transform into the Lillipup at the very beginning, or then you could turn into the Buffalant. Not oh, just you turn into team. the oh that'd yeah, be you could turn into whatever you're fighting and use their basic attack, right? And based on what you're doing, you'd have to choose. Okay, are you going to go a special Ditto or physical Ditto? Interesting. I feel like that'd be very hard to balance, but yeah, but they already have all the other models for everything, right? So. Hmm. I'm trying to think uh, who I who I think they're going to add. I think they're who just going to want? Give... Because I we want... both said who we want. Yeah, well, I want either Sceptile or Blaziken to be added. Like, I feel I think like those they're... are safe bets. Yeah, they're and like they're are like two of my five favorite Pokemon of all time. The other I'm... one I would really want would be Heracross. Because I find that there's not, on the roster, there's not, like, how how many, po- like, just basic Pokemon are there? There's only Zorora, right? Cramorant. Like, and Cramorant. And um, um, technically Snorlax, even though he has a baby form, usually. Yeah. And, and Lucario. Lucario. But, like, and Absol. Heracro- yeah, so there's actually quite a bit, but. And Pikachu. <laughs> no Pikachu evolves. <laughs> quite a few. Yeah, but not in this no. game. <laughs> yeah, but still, like I, I find Heracross would be cool just because, like, uh, I, I could just imagine some of his move sets where, like, he like rams into people and flicks them up with the, into the air with his, uh, his horn. Yeah. He could do, he could do, uh, so yeah, that could have been, uh, could be Mega Horn. He could do close combat. Uh, I don't know. I, I, he could fly. Like, he could probably be a little bit speedier than like. Uh, yeah, you would I would think. love, I would love Heracross. I think Heracross would be a great Pokemon. I think his only competition is the much more popular Gen two bug Pokemon, Caesar. But I Scyther think they would be, cool. be dis- I think they'd be distinct enough that they could have them both. Yeah, I don't think like, I don't think there's like rules or anything like that that would like deconfirm characters like. Smash Bros. Yeah, no, I agree with you because especially like, like the president yeah. they've already set with having Wigglytuff. Like, like the fact that Wigglytuff was on the base roster, and then the first like of the five characters they they added first, three of them are the same aesthetic, which is fairy kind of like pink cute which is Gardevoir Blissey and then Sylveon so like I don't know like I don't think they care if they're repeating kind of like yeah aesthetics mm-hmm. so yeah those would be my three even like Volcarona could be cool as well yeah, I don't know that'd be cool. character that I like Volcarona cool. could be cool. Electros, could be cool. I'm wondering so. too like because you mentioned Blaziken um and Sceptile, I'm wondering if they're going to do, like, eventually add all the starters. Like, they've added all the Gen 1 ones. Like, maybe they can start adding Gen 2 ones now. And, like... Yeah. I, I don't know if they would do that, to be honest with you. Because, like... To me... Gen 2 is very plain. Well, yeah. There's that. And then also, like... I don't know if I would ever want to play as, like... Meganium? Uh, well, no, not well, besides the Gen 2 ones. Like, I don't know if I'd want to play as Embor. I don't know if I'd want to play as Primarina. For me, personally. I know people you like personally, but other people, yeah. But, like, uh, I wouldn't want to play as Superior. Like, it's just... I, I don't know. It just... Fair. Okay. Well, so, how about... Who do you think they're going to add? Who do you each think oh, they're going to add? I think they're going to add another Legendary... Uh, a Legendary as a playable character. Uh, like I could see them p- putting Mewtwo in. To be honest with you, well, there's rumors about Marshadow as well. Yeah, um, yeah, I Mewtwo Type-Null would be cool. Mewtwo is a tough one. I really want Type Null, actually. Type Null Silvalli. 
Um, I so I Mewtwo's a tough one because I've thought about Mewtwo and I'm like he could go either way. He could easily be a, an objective in the middle, but he can also be playable. Mm-hmm. Like he's definitely can go either way. Um, I also think they're gonna add another legendary, but know who I think is gonna be the next one after maybe Marshadow, who it sounds like he might be kind of confirmed. Um, I can like, see them doing Cub Fu. Oh yeah, Cub Fu. Yeah, Cub Fu could work because then you could have the branching, uh, the branching. Um, like you can have the was it the based different combat which, styles? Yeah, I right? could be based off which, um, which like move. based off which move you take. Yeah, that should be really cool. I would like that. Even like. A legendary like Genesect could work too. I think like yeah, Genesect would be cool. What, um, like, a, a, basically, a, a legendary Pokemon that's not like enormous, right? Like, no, like Groudon or or like Dialga, Palkia, not these massive legendaries, but like and to in terms of size, but like Mewtwo's not too tall. Zerora is not tall, right? So, uh, Vitini would be cool too. That actually, no, Victini would be a better like a um. I like think, objective. yeah, I was going to say, like, I don't know if the mythicals would be like the pixies would be playable, but what I would love to see them is as an objective, almost similar to like Abra and the quick play where like maybe later on as the meta develops, add the pixies. So like Mew shows up and what it is, is it's a Pokemon that that's like in the jungle. And when you start attacking it, it it'll teleport to another part of the jungle and whoever is able to kill Mew gets like a massive buff, but it's like really hard, like, cause it's always moving around. And so it becomes the jungler's like role to like basically hunt down the pixie. Yeah. Um, and then like, I feel like, yeah, they're the only other like legendaries I can really see, like shaman could work dark rye. Um, I could see, I don't Honestly, know any else. of the legendaries could work. Yeah. Um, and then as for like just normal Pokemon, um, there's probably a few that are going to be added at some... Like Blaziken, I think, is a very, very safe bet. What about Beedrill? Um, <laughs> Beedrill would be cool. Um because then you'd have like it's... okay, the mid stage would be absolutely useless because you just get hardened <laughs> and tackle. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things. Um, I think was... eventually, I think eventually they're gonna add uh, another evolution. I feel yes. like Eevee's Eevee's popular enough. Like they could probably they'll probably do like Umbreon, Vaporeon, Espeon, or... Vaporeon. Yeah. Like I think those are the three most popular ones. Jolteon's pretty popular too. Um, well, I can also see like Electabuzz or um, something showing up. But the other, only other thing I was going to say is how do you guys think? Like, one thing I'm surprised they didn't add and that I'd like to see is some kind of incorporation of Megas. Like, I would have liked if Charizard's like um, super move just turned him into Mega Charizard when he's doing it. Like, I don't know why they didn't do that. Do you think they would incorporate that? in some uh, aspect or do you think it's too it, late now i think it's too late i think there's like at least for megas i think there's there's too many pokemon on the roster that have mega evolutions or that are that are in the game period that have mega evolutions that aren't like that i feel like they they wouldn't go back and try to fix that because like it'd be weird mm-hmm. if like scissor gets added to the game and he has his mega evolution as a, a bell ability but none of the other pokemon can i think that's True. just well, what about or, um, as a skin, as like a see, premium skin? That see, like that would work. I think that would work, and it'd be the type yeah. of thing where like you play the game. Uh, just say you're you're Char Charmander, like you pick Charizard, so you go Charmander to Charmeleon, and then in just Charizard. Once you hit a certain level, just say then that's when your skin changes, because like it yeah. would be or or like right away even like honestly like they could do either way it wouldn't yeah. matter to me but that would be cool okay. i think i think eventually something like that would happen yeah okay well i, I think it would be like an event too yep i could see that well um the last thing i'll mention just for you guys and for the listeners at home is uh, if you do play pokemon unite and you haven't signed in since blissey came out look forward to the fact that they added 
um, full on Snorlax Barry costume to the loot box roll thing. So, you know, you can play and try and get him. Um, I know that's a silly, fun costume, but I think that that's kind of our impressions of Pokemon Unite, what we thought about what they put in to the Presents today, and I think we're ready to just move on to the Pokemon Presents, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, um, goodbye, um, Pokemon Unite. So, after this, they go into some other mobile games, ones that... Um, of various <laughs> levels of importance. Um, so we don't really care about Pokemon Cafe Mix. We're not really going to talk about Pokemon Cafe Mix. So I'm just going to skip ahead. That's nice. Um, they're adding adding content. But yeah. for those who enjoy it, that's And about then there's it. some Pokemon Masters EX stuff. There's some events with Anne and um, Team Rainbow Rocket and Leon and Eternatus. So yeah, great. That's a lot of like characters. Holy smokes. Yeah. So... Um, and then we get into Pokemon Go, which we already knew this, but they're adding some Gen 8 Pokemon to the game. So they haven't even done Gen 7 yet, but they're adding um, Wulu, Squovit, and Phalanx to the game, as well as um, they're adding the mascots Zacian. from Sword and Shield. They're adding um, Zacian and Zamazenta, but which I think... Up forms. Well, the powered up forms, they are the powered up forms. It's just you need the item to make them the powered up form, right? So mm -hmm. I like, and this is all part of this Hoopa event that's been going on all year, um, which will culminate obviously in Tupa. But like what I think is very significant, I actually want to get out there. Like I don't usually do raids anymore. I do the community days. I mean, I check daily, but I actually want to go and do the Zacian Zamazenta raids because um first of all i'm sure they're going to get to the point where zation and zamazenta have shinies and the shinies aren't even available on sword and shield and two zation and zamazenta are two of the most um like economically valuable pokemon on pokemon home because they're the pokemon sword and shield mascots um mm -hmm. wait, and that's the only way to get them right now and sword and shield are fairly long games so like i kind of want to get some just you know for trade material for other things Yep, trade bait. Exactly. Plummet that so. stock. Plummet that st <laughs> that Pokemon it stock will. value. It will, no matter what happens. The, the value of Zacian and Zamazenta in, in the Pokemon uh, trading market will go down. It's just yeah. the more people that catch them, the, the, the lower the price will be. So yes. I don't think it's I don't think it's gonna drive the price down a lot, to be honest with you. It's just gonna At least be... not initially. Yeah. But over time it will. So but I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I honestly think Niantic may have watched our Pokemon Generational Showdown because they completely skipped Gen Seven. They went from six to eight. So maybe uh, they did have some Gen Seven because they've had the Alolan forms before. They've had Alolan forms, but like new Pokemon, they they just completely skipped the new Pokemon. So yeah, maybe they're Hub so... World fans. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so we will move on then to um what is the bulk of the pokemon presents which is pokemon brilliant diamond and pearl and pokemon legends arceus so they start off by giving us a new look at pokemon brilliant diamond and pearl which is the first time we've seen it since they unveiled it in february um and we've seen little clips of it in the like switch oled um as well as other um commercials that have shown that the graphics have been revamped um but this is our first like in-depth look. So like as soon as the video catches up with what I'm saying, you'll you'll kind of get a glimpse. And I've seen side by sides and like they've revamped the graphics like mm -hmm. quite a bit. So the lighting engine in particular, that's the first thing that caught my eye is like the the shadows, the 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 sun, the water looks incredible in the game like it's like look at it like this one scene here where they added like the petals flowing in like the flower petals flowing in it looks yeah. look it, everything it looks closer to like uh Link's Awakening now yeah you know it was it, definitely yeah it's definitely a lot more polished yeah for sure like the shadow the clouds like it looks really nice and like that's the thing like i was I think out of all of us, I was the only one that was really gung ho about this when we did our initial Pokemon presents discussion how many months ago that was but now i feel like 
I feel even I, I'm even more in love with the style and the, yeah, the, the same game. Like it, I'm it looks incredible. More, I'm definitely more interested in it now than I was before. Um, mm-hmm. And like, look at the battle animations. Like they they look good, and like so do the character models. Um, and they there's really a lot of cool on those text boxes. Yeah, <laughs> they, they really focus want... on those a lot. Um, Union there's... room. <laughs> Um, and there's a lot of returning features here and a lot of like yeah, new, a new features. Feature, actually. And, yeah, there's some returning new features, revamped features, which I like. It's like they're even though it's a faithful remake, they're also adding stuff that makes the quality of life better. And like there's some things that I wish that they showed off or that they'd add um that they didn't. But mm-hmm. either way, I'm very happy with what I'm seeing here. Especially like the customization is big. Like, mm-hmm. that's something that it was hard to play Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire without that after they introduced it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm very glad that they're doing it here. I even saw, I don't know if you saw their screenshots, it wasn't in the trailer, but you can actually customize the characters, like skin tones and everything, just like with the modern Pokemon games. Like, it's not just the. Um, yeah. It's not just the clothing. Like, it's the same thing. Like, you're going to start off the game and it's going to ask you to select a preset. And they all look like typical Dawn and Ethan. Or sorry, not Ethan, Lucas, Don and Lucas. Um, but you know, like there's the variety, there's the diversity there. Um so I don't know, like I I think this game looks really, really good. Mm-hmm. I really like the, way the um the feature they added to the underground, like how they they're making the underground a little more in depth by having those like hidden areas that have Pokemon there that you can battle that aren't found in the the actual like overworld and then also the fact that your pokemon can travel behind behind you in the game like that's yeah. so awesome like the only games that have had that previously were the let's go games spoilers if you haven't played the let's go games and then the gen 2 remakes i think that's a fantastic addition to the game like i can't wait to have my pokemon following behind me like that is something that i always really cherish when they do make that available it's a big deal to me and then the fact like you said the character customization uh but like there's there the fact that the the pokemon contest look more fleshed out i think that's going to make it the poke because i found the pokemon contest to be really boring in the other games but now that the fact that like you can act like it looks more like a show it's not just like a sprite dancing on the screen so that will probably make it a slightly more replayable i don't know how in-depth they're gonna be but um i just like i'm very surprised still that there's no talk like they haven't talked about uh any of the content that was in pokemon platinum like whether that's gonna be in the game i am fully in belief right now that pokemon platinum is gonna be dlc that there's gonna be a platinum expansion Mm mm-hmm that's a possibility. And then the other thing is the Battle Frontier. Uh, I, I'm sure if this is a... like Because the Battle Frontier was in Diamond and Pearl as well, right? Yeah, it was. So that would be post-game, I guess. And they they never normally reveal post-game before the game comes out. With the odd oh. exception with like the Delta episode. But uh, um, uh, can, we, can we actually zoom back in, in the footage just for a quick, quick sec? Yep, no Actually, worries. Jules, when they were when they were out on the the snowy peaks of Mount Coronet. Yep. There. No worries. Do you think? Uh, zoom back. Yeah, I am. Don't worry. You oh, can. Oh, okay. You can start talking about it. Yeah. So right about here, I just want our viewers to see it. Pause. About in the middle of the screen, slightly to the left, you can see the rock climb paths. Do you think mm-hmm. that they're going to make you do HMs again? I don't. Yeah, I, I, I hope they don't. Think that I they, hope they don't. I really just don't see how they can bring back HMs. Like I there's got to be a different system in place there. Mm-hmm. Whether it's an I think it, it would have to be an item probably. Uh that's why ride Pokémon works so well. It's just but the thing is they haven't shown anything like that that would uh it was an idea. Counter- yeah, so like it's I'm not gonna get my hopes up, but I could go no, either you know what way. That means, my... right? You know what that means? You just gotta bring just gotta bring the Babarel with you. Because yep. it can do everything. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta bring Babarel. 
Yeah, it's just like, it. it's looking really good, and like even like just these cute little character models. Like, look how silly Professor Rowan looks. But then they show his Professor art, Rowan and he looks, looks awesome. Silly to begin with. Like, like I don't was... understand. I really don't understand the criticism for this game's art style when people widely say Link's uh, Link's Awakening is like amazing. Well, and, right? But to be fair, go back and look at the first trailer, and I think that's the problem: is it wasn't the art direction. That was the issue. It was the quality of the art direction. Because Link's Awakening looks like a moving toy. And so does this game right now. But if you go back and look at that first trailer, it looked like a mobile game. It looked bad. It looked like not only is it chibi, but it's bad. Like poorly made chibi. Like this doesn't look like it was a style choice. This looks like this this company doesn't have a lot of money and they want to budget this game. Whereas now, stylistically, I look at it and I'm like, this is cute. This is like, they put effort into these models. This game does look like a moving kind of like cartoon. Like, I don't see it as cheap anymore. And there are substantial improvements compared to the original. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely there is. But like, uh, I don't know. It. it... I guess it's also because of the tone of the game, right? Like, you got a character like Cyrus, whose literal goal is to destroy the world and then kill himself. And in Pokemon Platinum, he actually does kill himself. And then you see him walking around like this cute little cherub. <laughs> um, I oh, do God. like, but if you're talking about some of these features... Um, With the Pokemon contest, quick, quick, quickly, when they show the Pokemon contest coming up here... Well, um, well, let's talk about the underground first because it's here right now. All right. Because um, I love the underground and I like what they're doing here. I like that they're bringing the bases back. But I love this idea of the secret, um, the caves. secret, the, the caves. Because to me, that sounds like maybe what they're going to do instead of doing um, maybe the swarms. Or even if they do do the swarms. This could be a way to catch Pokemon that don't typically appear in Sinnoh. Also, did you... Let's go back for a second. Do you see the proportions on that onyx? Yeah, it's way too small. Yeah. Look at that onyx. Mm -hmm. That is hilarious. That's a tiny I onyx. I honestly... I'll have to look into it, because, like, there were Pokemon that... Like, there was, I think, on the actual Sinnoh decks, when you include the Sinnoh, like, the, all the Pokemon that originated in Sinnoh, and then the Pokemon you could catch in the game, I feel like it was about, uh, it was about half of the Pokemon that existed at the time were available that yeah. way. So, now I feel like the ones that are going to appear in these hidden areas in the underground are going to be ones that weren't available in the game, that you actually had to, uh, to to import from previous games. Yeah. So I agree. That's what I, I think. I think all of them too. will be in the game though, honestly, still. I there 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 probably will be a number of Pokemon I think they'll be available. Programmed. I think they'll be programmed in the game. I yeah, just but like don't not think they'll obtainable. Be... Yes. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, the Pokemon contests look good. Um, there was this scene in the Pokemon contest, I think it's a throw it's it's a nod to the anime. Because Dawn was wearing the dress that the very similar looking dress that she wore in the Pokemon anime for a contest, and she was using a Baneri, which she did have in the Gen Four anime. So I think I'm that's so a, that happy a potential nod that they are bringing back this this feature. I love mm -hmm. the Pokemon that's following. <laughs> like this is so fun. Growth. I'm so excited for this this feature. Like this has always been one of my favorite features. I like how like you see it here with the the Buizel. Um, I like how they're kind of taking on the let's go version of the Pokemon following you rather than the version that's in Cargold Soul Silver. I like how certain Pokemon have, you know, certain ways of moving. Like, Buizel is not fast enough to keep up with you. He's run behind. Like, mm -hmm. I love that. And I hope more Pokemon have those interesting styles just like we saw in Let's Go. Mm-hmm. Like, if you have, like, a Voltorb or an Electrode, it just rolls. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and, like, so looking at this here, 
Like, what is th- what is this? What's happening here? That would be waterfall. waterfall. But he's like attacking a Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, it's a waterfall animation. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. but it's Gligar. There's Gligar in there. Yeah. Yeah, I think this game looks really good. I'm definitely excited for it. I was hoping that they would announce some other features. Here, I'm gonna move the the screen to to be on something Pokemon instead. Um, but I was kind of hoping they would announce other features, such as um, like Megas maybe coming back, um, or even like I didn't want Dynamax, but like. Just something else. Like I, I wanted more modern stuff in it, um, similar to like Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. But I mean, I guess it's still gonna be fine. Like I'm, I'm excited for the game nonetheless. I think Gen Four in general is just a good generation. They've changed enough that it feels warranted. Like it feels like this is a remake, um, and I am excited to play it again. So. I'm wondering if Pokemon Beyond Gen 4 will even show up. I think it's... I For sure, I think Pokemon that... um, Like, for instance, I feel like for sure you're going to... like I think Sylveon would be in this game. Just because like, the e- other EVs are. Evolutions. I feel like... Galarian variants. Galarian and Alolan forms of Pokemon that are uh, in this game will also be added. And, like, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Megas could be in the game. Uh, but things like Dynamaxing, I think, is... No, for sure not Dynamaxing. But I, I don't think there's going to be the ability to get Pokemon that aren't tied to Generation 4 that have come out since Generation 4. So mm. I, I, I'm not getting my hopes up for that, to be honest with you. That's fair. Unless Except once we get to the battle yeah. frontier like we did in Gen 4, and that's when it just blew the doors open and be like, yep, all the Pokemon are here. I don't know. I <sighs> think we're going to have some form of digs in this game too. But I think we're going to have everything up through Gen 4, like everything from Gens 1 through 4, for sure. Would that be well, yeah. digs Wouldn't that just it's be... Not. No, like that would be that stuff would be in there for sure because the original games had everything up to Gen 4. Right? yeah and like anything extra would be nice yeah i i really think so i can't remember when i think it's at the very end of the the pokemon presents they talk about um pokemon home and they talk about ranked battles and they say something about how there's like a ranked battle thing coming up from sword and shield and then there's a little disclaimer that says ranked battles will continue in pokemon sword and shield not in Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Legends Arceus, which makes me feel like Sword and Shield is still going to be their platform for, like, Pokemon. Um, And as a result, I think what's going to happen is when Pokemon Home launches next year in this game and in Legends Arceus, um, I think they're going to update Sword and Shield and any Pokemon that were in Diamond Pearl that weren't in Sword and Shield, I think they're going to add to Sword and Shield so that you can still use the stuff from these games in your main game, like in your game where you're having like competitive teams. Cause it would be a shame if you, there isn't that mode in these games, but there isn't sword and shield, but you can't use any of the Pokemon you raise in these games. Like yeah. I think that it would make sense to just update sword and shield mm-hmm. to have that compatibility. But anyway, like let's move into legends Arceus. Um, now I don't know about you guys, but I, oh yeah, there's a switch light coming out. Um, I fully believed after the trailer in um, February that that game had to be late 2022. And then when they said it was in January, I was like, this game is going to bomb. That game looked like pre-alpha. I, I have not been excited for Legends Arceus because I'm like, Pokemon Company is making a mistake. That game is not ready. It did not look ready. It's not going to be ready. So I came into this very skeptical and very like, I don't know. Um, I don't know where you guys were at coming in. I, hey, I yeah. Oh, you, go you ahead, Gio. No, no, no. You go first. I always interrupt you. Um, I am always of the belief for like, and I don't know if it's like a Nintendo bias or anything, but at least just with Nintendo games, we're like, when it says, uh 
like like when they when they say and like you see like the little like watermark or like the little image at the bottom like not final game footage or whatever that it's there for a reason and let's go arceus is the re like that's a or not let's go arceus pokemon legends arceus is one of those games where you really need to take that seriously because like i was totally fine with what we saw in the last presentation because I had faith that the game was going to look better because almost every game that l looks bad from Nintendo in terms of just like if it looks like it's not running properly or whatever, it normally does get fixed by the time it launches. Like, yeah, but Pokemon's I such a different was, vehicle. I, like, I thought Breath of the Wild wasn't like it looked rough at points and it even it even launched kind of like there were parts of slowdown and i expect that to happen in this game like it's not going to be perfect i know it's just i don't have as much faith for pokemon company as nintendo pokemon company definitely does not have the same level of quality approval that nintendo does and we've seen that with their last few games. So just, I was a little skeptical after Pokemon Sword and Shield. Like, I like Pokemon Sword and Shield, but I also recognize where they made cuts and where they weren't putting in their all. And I was just nervous about this game because it felt like they were forcing it out earlier than it needed to be. So I was skeptical. Um, but that being said, why don't we, like, move along the trailer so you kind of get the starters there. Um, here's the three starters of Pokemon Legends Arceus. Which, fun fact, let's go back actually. For those of you who don't know, um, there's a very specific reason why they chose these starters. Um, and it's because each of them represents a different type of weapon in um, in like feudal Japan. Feudal or is it rural rural Japan? What would, what would feudal, you call this? Feudal, 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 feudal Japan. Japan. So Ashwat here, who becomes Samurai, represents like the sword, like the samurai. Um, Rowlet, who becomes Decidueye, represents the Yumi, or the bow. Um, and then um, Cyndaquil, who becomes Typhlosion, represents the um, explosives. Because those are the three different types of weapons that were like commonly used in feudal Japan. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool to see that. Anyway, just a fun fact. But let's uh, move into the trailers of Pokemon Legends Arceus. So, you know, you get this nice little thing... Um, we didn't really know what was going on in this game from the last and you trailer. Get and then you get Badoof. Definitely, you can well. already tell the game's running a little better and looks a little better than the last time we saw it. Yeah, it doesn't look um, like a painting color. anymore. And yeah. the sand just pops. Like that's the thing I love about it. Like in every single biome that we see in this, there's something that pops on screen. It's so vibrant. The colors and then are so you vibrant. see this, and I went nuts. I was Yo, like, Antler. regional variants? Stantler? With a beard? Yeah. And then we get here, and we start to get it. A... I thought it was a sauce buck at first. Jubilife Village. Yeah. And by the way, that there was like a little hair salon there, so you could probably customize your, uh, your yeah. hair there, which is cool. You kind of get a sense of this region, chasing some some Pokemon, sneaking up on them. I don't know, but like when I was watching this trailer, I was getting like big sense of like Breath of the Wild meets Monster Hunter meets Pokemon. I really like how and then I you have, I, don't know I literally HUD, I almost cried. Fantastic! I was so excited about um an, a variant of Growlithe because I've been wanting this since Alola. Then you kind of see a bit of the battle mechanics. Um, we'll get into that. I actually have I a how, lot, of, lot to say a, about the battle system. Yeah. I love how Mount Coronet is like always the focal point. Like no matter where you go, like you're running around and you always see it. Just there. and then she jumps off the mountain and is just lifted like up Link. by bravery, uh, regional version of bravery, and then K. So then. We're about to get to the water. When I saw this, the whole time I was like, what 
fucking Pokemon is that? I had Lib. no idea. I thought it was um, what's it called? The one from Gen Eight, like the most recent one, the uh, Barascuda. For some reason, um, oh, definitely Basculin. Like I, I oh, but that's Basculin one right of the away. Basculins. Yeah, that's the I forgot which the water one. The no, uh, it, or salt water or fresh water. Yeah, I think it's one of. I think that's the differentiator between Basculin. <laughs> Yeah, I love the fact that there's these like ride Pokemon. There's one for water. There's one for land. There's one for air. Um, and then there's and there these... <laughs> And then this like there's clearly like a story going on, which is cool. These are like boss um, battles, which are cool. And you can take Pokemon. damage from Pokemon, like you the you, that you yourself. Is, yeah, yeah, like that. That's insane. Like. Pokemon damage people. Yeah. The fighting styles that impact the combat is the 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 combat in the game is actually going to be more. It adds an extra layer of depth. Those fighting styles, like it's whether you ball. whether you want to deal a really strong attack or faster attacks, I think that's going to be that that adds a like a whole other level of strategy. Yeah. Yeah, Purple Pass. But yeah, I'm honestly I was excited for this game here, and I'm even more excited. Yeah. Now, now after seeing all of this, like I didn't here. watch it. I didn't watch it live. I just I woke up when I woke up. Actually, I woke up because Gino like shook me awake, and he's like, "Mateo, did you see it?" And I said, "No." And I had the the YouTube video on my phone before I went to sleep. So when I would wake up, I would just press play, and then I wouldn't get anything spoiled. Gino's like, you need to see it. It was really awesome. So, And Gino was kind of harsh on the, the trailer uh, on the game the first time around. So I'm like, well, if he's impressed, then it's probably really good. So that was those were my expectations going in. So now he's going to do a little deep dive here. Oh, so Badoof. we can also do the little deep dive. Um, oh, the Badoo yeah. frolicking so, in the fields. It's kind of so. It brings, it now we kind of go into enjoy. like the regional variants, I believe. Um, so no, like I the think... first. No. Here's oh no! Map. First, they talk about the region. Map. So what's interesting is how the region is not called Sinnoh; it's called Hisui, um, mm -hmm. and it's because this is an ancient version of Sinnoh. It was called something different at the time. Fine. Um, I I can get. I am down with that. Like. Um, yeah, I can deal yeah, with it. You notice how the, also the map is looks like it's rotated forty five degrees. Mm -hmm. Also, some hair oh, across. God. Those, uh, can't stand looking at a female hair across. Wow. Okay, yep. I loved. So I noticed this right before they started talking about it, but I noticed the kind of like uh, Team Galactic symbol almost yeah. up there, which mm -hmm. I thought is really the cool. I did notice yep. the Galarian thing. Um, but I thought that was really cool. Like, I like this idea that Team Galactic had roots, like, way further back, yeah. like in ancient Sinnoh. Well, if you look at the logo closely, the Team Galactic logo has the, like, sort of, tr like, the, the three points on it. There's the one at the top, the one at the bottom, and the one at the middle. And if you look at the logo closely, those three, like, points are on the whatever like right there yeah the, what what does it what's it stand for again the galaxy the, um, expedition yeah if you get rid of the the symbol in the top right and the bottom uh left corner and you smush the 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 top uh the top left and the bottom right logos in towards the middle i think it makes the galactic logo perfectly i think Mm -hmm. I have to look at well, them side by side, and like I love how like this character Silene is definitely supposed to be Cyrus's like ancestor. And yeah, she's planning out the bridge city over there, mm -hmm. and like and this guy Commander... Kamado is supposed to be like Rowan's yeah. ancestor, very mm -hmm. clearly. And the the professor in this game is actually just like, uh, he brings the Cyndaquil the Rowlet and Piplup to the region. Oshawa, you mean? 
Oh yeah, sorry, on the Oshawa to the region from his travels in in the other regions. So maybe we can see um, Leventon eventually. And, and I really regions. like this idea too, too. Like of like you stock before an expedition, like which reminds me a lot of Monster Hunter. Yeah, and, craft craft um, and it's the apricorns. Yay. Yeah. That that uh, like when because like Gen Four had a lot of ties to Gen Two when it first came out, right? And like being able to use the Kurt balls and all that kind of stuff. I wonder if those are going to make an appearance here also. Mm -hmm. Well, I think heavy balls are in the game. They crafted a heavy ball. Yeah, so, they did. I love the HUD. Like, if you rewind to the the HUD jewels, there's those three yep. icons that appear on the bottom left side of the screen. I wonder what the top one is, because like I think the the one at the bottom is probably your Pokedex. The one in the middle is probably your item inventory, but the one at the top, I don't know what that could be. Like, is that like an incubator? You think? Um, it looks like the could bottom like... is the Dex, like you said, and the yeah. top is like your menu. Because it looks like it's like Pokemon item and trainer card there. Um, I think it's like contacts. Like that's almost like a phone. That'd be like, so Like that weird. could be like a multiplayer thing or it could be... Because didn't they say there's multiplayer in this game? There is. But like a device like that would be really weird in if this is supposed to be like... Uh... But I think they do have some technology because... Like, I feel like it's like a Breath of the Wild kind of thing, where, like, there is technology, it's just... Primitive. Yeah, the wire primitive, but... still look like they're made of wood. That's why, like, it's just... I don't know. Well, either way, like... You it's interesting the way that you... Yeah, it could be your quest. It could be, like... Um, I like this idea, though, like, how different Pokemon react differently... So, like, you got Pokemon, like, they show here, like, Bidoof will come right up to you, and it's like, yo, like, I'm down, let's hang out. And then Starly runs away, like, as soon as you get close, you have mm -hmm. to sneak up. And then there's other Pokemon that are hostile, like Luxio, or sorry, Shinx here, who's going to attack you as soon as you get near it. And not just attack the Pokemon, but attack you. But yeah, here's the, the, the battles. And you, yeah. So yeah, this is really cool. This is apparently there was a because uh, I've watched like a few other people like react to the trailer, and apparently there's like uh, there are other games that have like RPGs that have mechanics, battle mechanics like this, where like you yep. can choose. There's an action uh, order. Yep. Yeah, I think that's so cool. It reminds me of Bravely Default in a in a sense, like not exactly, but in Bravely Default, kind of like you can um, make choices that are, like, um, a little bit more risky in order to have, like, multiple attacks in a row, and it's similar to that kind of system. Mm -hmm. I hope it doesn't, like, say uh, agility style or what's the whatever, the strength style. I hope it doesn't pop up on the screen every time you swap, because I think that'd be really annoying. <laughs> I like this, too. Like, look at, like, the tasks, right? Like this reminds me of like almost a mix of like what we saw in Pokemon Snap earlier in the year and like current Pokemon. Like looking at like you're not just catching Pokemon in this game, you're researching them. Mm -hmm. Which I really like. Preferred well, foods Pokemon aren't even in the proper order too. Like it had the stage ones, then you had like the stage twos after it. Yeah. There's a lot of Pokemon Speedle. here too. So then you start to get into some of the new Pokemon. So the first one we have here, um, or sorry, like we have, so we have Weirdeer. Um, and at first, when I first saw this Pokemon, I thought regional variant of Stantler, but I was very pleasantly surprised to hear not only are they doing regional variants in this game, they're doing brand new fucking Pokemon because Weirdeer is an evolution of Stantler. Mm -hmm. Do they and say it's a cool the typing? one too? They did. They, they did. So Weirdeer is a normal psychic type. I don't love that the first. It's not a first. Um, I believe Meow Stick or something else was 
normal psychic as well. I think what's it called? Wasn't Oranguru normal psychic? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think he was. So either way, I don't love the typing, but whatever. I think the Pokemon's cool. I think Stantler definitely deserved an evolution, and I'm glad that it got one. So Weird Ear looks cool. I want to know now like, why Stantler why does can't this Pokemon... evolve. Yeah, why can't this Pokemon evolve in future games? I mean, the real reason? Because they didn't make an evolution till now. Yeah. And you No, know, I wonder if they give an in-game reason why. But I mean, there doesn't need to necessarily be an in-game reason, right? Like, because like there's constant retcons within Pokemon. Like Galarian forms now and Alolan forms and stuff show up in old gens when they remake stuff or redo stuff. Um and they don't really need to explain it. Like they can just say that this Pokemon had a certain connection to Sinnoh or like an old style of Sinnoh, right? Fair enough. And I guess when they get to Basculin, there were just weren't enough Basculin dying for it to evolve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Basket Legion is really cool. So again, like another evolution. And I love the story behind this Pokemon, which is yeah, again, like the Basculin that survives the the swim upstream, like harnesses the souls of all the dead Basculins and becomes Basket Legion. Um and this one is water ghost type. Um yeah. very cool. And then this one is a regional variant. So this is just regional Braviary, and this is regional Growlithe. So Hisuian Braviary is Psychic Flying. Um, it also seems to be serving as your, like, flying mount, which is really cool. Taxi. Um, it's fucking up that Lucario. Um, I then wonder H- if... Hisuian Growlithe, who's Fire Rock. Um, very interesting typing. Um, but I actually really like the design. I'm excited to see what Arcanine or whatever it evolves into looks like. I also wonder if Rowlet will have a Hisuian variant or if it'll I just be regular s- Rowlet. Well, that's what I was actually going to bring up. Rowlet um, is the starter. You, you kind of like... Or Rowlet, sorry. Um, Rufflet. Oh, Rufflet. Um, yeah, no, sorry. Rufflet is not. they Because uh, it says in Braviary's um, thing that just Rowlet's in the region turn into... Rufflet. But actually, I was going to bring up now that you kind of like said it. I had to double check this, but they have not shown Typhlosion, Samurott, or Decidueye yet. And I wonder if they would do, because we this is the first ever like mainline Pokemon game that's a new game that's reusing starters. I wonder if they would give us Hisuian variants of the starter evolutions so that's that we really actually cool. get... I would love to have just different versions of those three I love that the... Samurott standing on two legs holding store holding swords like Duat. I don't know, honestly. I don't think they Instead will. That, like quadruped. I don't think they will either, but I would love for that to be a nice little surprise. Yeah. I love um, the Pokemon professor here is called Laventon. There's no lavender tree, or maybe he's the one who goes to Lavender Town. <laughs> um but yeah, like I don't know if I have much more to say about this game. I'm just very excited. I'm really excited about the regional variants. Like that's something I definitely wanted. Um, I have a bit of a gripe of the fact that now these new Pokemon are going to be in the Gen Eight decks after the legendaries. But whatever. Um, well, are there any? Vic- Victini kind of messed that up with Gen Five, right? Like legendaries should be going at the end, and like a Gen should start with. The, the the first grass starter, right? Yeah. So we've had a messed up national decks already. For a while, yeah. Well, is there, like, kind of like to, unless there was other stuff you guys wanted to talk about, but what I want to just ask, kind of to close it off, is there any Pokemon you want to have a Hisuian variant? Well, this is the thing. I want... Like, I'm very happy that they brought, like, they gave Statler an evolution, right? But for variants, I only would want Pokemon that have come out since, like, new po- po- new Pokemon that have come out basically from Gen 5 to now. I wouldn't mind having something like, uh, probably, because, like, 
Hawaii and Japan are very close, right? So maybe get some Alolan Pokemon that, I don't know, maybe like, a, I don't know, like a like an Oricorio or something like that that's very rooted in like Polynesian culture or even like uh, something like that in Japan be, just because like, oh, maybe a, a, a someone sailed from uh his Hisuya to to Alola and then came back like they did with Rowlet. So I think it would be something like that would be cool. Or even just like uh because like there's nothing about Braviary that screams uh like that or or even uh Basque Legion that like really screams like these can't exist anywhere else. So like Honestly, like I think there most of them are going to be surprise like Pokemon because I think there's definitely going to be more than just the what we've seen. Like they're going to be building up the 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 game. There's going to be more trailers. They're just going to be random yeah. info dumps where they're going to announce more Pokemon. But like, um, I because like, like I like regional variants a lot. I I don't know if they. For me, I don't I don't want to take Pokemon too seriously and be like, well, the why didn't they exist anywhere else? Like I don't think there needs to be an explanation other than we just want to make the game fun and so we're adding new spins on things. Yeah. Um I think there's although, one there's one there's one regional variant we can bank on, and it's Meowth. <laughs> we're gonna get uh, a Hisui and we, Meowth. At this point, if we don't get a Hisui and Meowth, I'll be upset. <laughs> um and it better be ugly. That's all I'll yeah. say. But I don't actually think we'll get his. I think we've seen Meowth actually already in the. I might be wrong, but um, no, I don't think we have. I like, and I think like for example, like I love Growlithe's because it looks like one of those, like tiger statues. Yeah, one of those the lion dogs, statues. Yeah, the tiger, yeah, like the like lion dog statues. Like it looks so cool. I'm excited to see what they do with our canine or an alternate Whatever. evolution. Yeah. Um, and um yeah i'm just like i i really want to see like i don't know if there's a pokemon specific like Growlithe was my pokemon i wanted to see so um but i hope well, there's is more. there is there another potential like because obviously this is like what we're seeing on screen that's how you're going to fly in the game swimming or surfing is going to be through basque legion and then uh you can ride the uh what's it called word yeah, because you wouldn't have a bike. Yeah, so yeah. could there be another potential, like a climbing one, that could be a alternate form or a regional variant of an existing Pokemon? Like mm. that, that would probably be another. I don't know. Thing I, I would th- think I feel like this covers it. Like I think Land, Sea, and Sky are like the three. Well, like I don't about, know if there would be another well, what one. What about Rock for climb. traversing snow, snowy areas or something? But I or, feel like Wordier can do that. Like I, yeah. I. I I genuinely think these are going to be the only three, um, unless there's like you can unless these aren't the only three you can use for these specific things unless these are just options you know yeah um I feel but... like Basculin would have a mass like Basculegion would be a massive um like a massive like missed opportunity if they didn't have the blue one also as Basculin. yeah I hope they have the blue one as well um but yeah I th- like. The only thing is, like, I don't. If Growlithe wasn't in this, I would be questioning whether there'd be any more variants. But the fact that we have two new evolutions, um, as these, like here, as well as a regional variant as one, and then we also have Growlithe, who's just not connected to this at all. Um, I do think there's going to be more. I think we're going to get some more evolutions. I think we're going to get some more variants. Um, I'd love to see more evolutions. Like, I'm so happy Pokemon Company is doing evolutions of old Pokemon again. Honestly, know who should get one? Finally, Dunsparce. Yeah. Just give Dunsparce the crazy dragon it was meant to be in this game. Oh, yeah. And I personally would like to see either a pre-evolution or a post-evolution for Heracross, but I know that's what, like, Heracross being a one stage is very much what makes it special. It also has a Mega, so that also throws a little bit of a wrench in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the only other thing I think 
to mention is um which wasn't mentioned here is and i probably should have mentioned it before but there is going to be um a manaphy event in brilliant diamond and finding pearl um they said for the first like i think it's three months um if you get the game it's like an early adopters bonus you get a manaphy egg now what i'm excited about is the fact that we're getting the egg we're not just getting manaphy and this is the first time in a long time that they've replicated an old event and not just given you the Pokemon. So now I'm really, really hoping that with Gen 4 that they program the old event areas for each of the legendaries into the game so that when those events do come, we don't just get given Shaman or Darkrai, we get given the items to go there. And I think what could be really fun is if they make it so that if you have a completed save file in Legends Arceus, that's how you unlock the flute in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl to go up and catch Arceus in that game. That would be cool. That would be really cool. I just noticed yeah, you know, that, I want that. Uh, we're Deer's uh, horns they th- it kind of makes sense that he is a psychic type now because of the 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 uh, antlers and like they're kind of like um he's gandalf well they've always been kind of like eyes even for stantler yeah right? it's true was just normal yeah he's a wizard um anyway i have no other thoughts on this game i'm just i'd just change my mind both these games i was mm. skeptical about um had some like i was hesitant about both of them i'm now very thoroughly excited i'm very thoroughly excited that both of them are coming out within six months like it's crazy to think that this game is coming out in january Mm -hmm. um and that will be a nice way to start off the year um i do like i think this game was supposed to be this year's big holiday game and covid probably pushed it pushed it back um but i'm very excited for it nonetheless um and yeah, I can't wait to see what they do with Pokemon. So, yeah, and it's great that they're adding more Pokemon through non like core generations anymore, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Like we got a taste of that with Pokemon Go by giving us Meltan, and now we're getting at least four, maybe or more, new Pokemon based off of this, like the Legend spinoff series. If it's going to be a series, yeah, right. I I'd, I'd love to see them grow the franchise uh, even more. Yeah, I agree. Okay, well, um, all I I don't think there's anything else to say. I don't think there's much to read into in the back of our uh, host here. That Infernape than... plush looks stupid, though. I just got to say that it looks <laughs> real. It looks real bad. Uh, well, also, you should notice there's a Greedent, um opposite yes. of Sylveon. So I think Greedent's going to be in Pokemon Unite. No, no, that's, that's the league of that. one goal. That's Squavit. Yeah, oh, that's Squavit. That's goal, true. True, 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 true. Mm-hmm. And that's through Pokemon um, Go. So. Yeah, and, and that side is Pokemon Go, and the other side is Pokemon Unite. You can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, anyway, I think we can kind of just cap it off. Um, so, both games look great. Uh, we're excited for Pokemon stuff. Hey, if you liked our um, discussion today, give us a like, subscribe, comment. Um, follow us on Spotify, um, all that jazz. Um, Geno fans, don't do any of that. And we look forward to talking more Pokemon with you as the um, as the year goes on. So we will say farewell. See you, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye.